there. His name is on the all that stuff. So now you, you'll know one of the guys that wrote it. That tell them about the night that you won the bus from ET. Well, it wasn't the night. It was a series of nights. <laughs> it, took it, a it, it started on Saturday, and I don't think it ended till Monday. <laughs> we, were, we were in a uh, we were in New England somewhere, and I don't even remember where we were. But we had to go to a little town called Olean, New York. And we was arriving on Sunday, had reservations there to go to Holiday Inn. And we got in there Sunday, uh, I think in the morning. But we'd been up all night, we were playing poker and we started shooting dice. We were gamblers. We started shooting dice and it was no limit as big time. I couldn't afford it nowadays. And uh, <laughs> anyhow, with the, the dice shooting, I got lucky. And we were sitting right in the windows of the Holiday Inn there for hours on that bus with the engines running and it started snowing. And it got really bad snowstorm. And they had us rooms, we wouldn't get off the bus. The driver kept trying to get us out. The guys, y'all get on into your rooms, go to bed so I can shut these engines down. And he finally left and we kept, we kept having to call him back and take a shovel and dig snow out where air could get to the engines to keep them cool. We still on our gambling. And Ernest was losing and I was winning big. I broke everybody on the bus, including Ernest. I got all the fuel money. I got all the concession money, all the personal money. And um, we run out of booze. And it was on a Sunday, and only in New York was dry. So we had a Dolly Parton's bass player with us, Ronnie Blackwell. And Ronnie was, he was about like me. He wanted to drink or he was going to go to bed. And I told him, I said, call us a taxi driver. Surely somebody knows a bootlegger. And the taxi driver come over and he said, well, all I can get is scotch. And it was a ushers or something, maybe one of those cheap scotches. And he said, be $50 for a quart. Now this was in 1977, I think. Fifty dollars for a quart, and I said, "Run it, run that crook off!" I ain't paying no fifty dollars for a quart of whiskey. So we went back to gambling, and I'm starting to get sober, and I wanted to go to bed. I had I had all the money in the world, and I sat there and I rubbed that mouth, and I, said, I made the statement. I said, "I'd I'd give a hundred dollars for a drink of whiskey right now." And Ernest said, don't you move. And he went back to his room and got digging and come back up with a quart of Seagram 7. And uh, I told him, I said, before I loan you any more money, and he offered me the, his big old ring had E.T. on it. It's worth four or $5,000 in your 40s. A very valuable ring. He wanted to borrow a thousand dollars on it. I said, no. So I ain't making no more look unsecured, unstable loans like that. He said, how about this Jimmy Rogers guitar? A mark and priceless. And I said, no, I don't want no guitar. He said, what do you want? I want a thousand dollars. I said, get me the title to the bus. <laughs> and we got, it, we got the driver down there and we witnessed it, signed it over completely. And I let him have a thousand bucks. And we still gambling, he's still losing. So he brought that quart of whiskey up there, and I took the cap off of it and threw the cap in the trash can and had a drink, and I had the bottle to Pete Mitchell. He had a tot, and Ronnie Blackwell had a drink. And Ernest was standing up, and he got right over my face doing this. And I just looked up at him and said, what you want? He said, you said you'd give $100 for a drink of liquor. I want my $100. So I got a $100 bill, one of his, and just threw it at him. He picked it up and he got right back in my face like this. And he said, you done broke them. You're paying for their booze too. On $200 more, dollars. that's three drinks of my whiskey. So I gave him $200 more. Dollars. And Ronnie told me the next day that I paid 
He said, you run the taxi driver off because he wanted a thousand bucks for a quart of scotch. I mean, fifty dollars for a quart of scotch. He said, you paid Ernest more than three thousand dollars for that jug of whiskey last night. A hundred dollars a drink. We had more than thirty drinks out of it. Anyhow, I had the, the note on the bus, the title, and the next day, we had a three o'clock sound check. And the next day I got back to the bus at about two o'clock Eastern time. And I got all of Ernest's personal belongings and just jammed them up on my bunk. And I, I was in his bed when he walked in. He opened the door and he had his little overnight kit and he walked in there and here I am piled up in the middle of his bed watching TV. He said, what's going on? And I said, well, hey, old man, before you come through that door, from now on, I want you to knock, because there's been some changes made around here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he he told the driver to get that CPA down in Nashville. He said, get this crazy, some money up here. I got to get control of the troubadours again. <laughs> but that wasn't all bad. Uh, two or three weeks went by. And, Luck wasn't always on my side. I had some bad days and he won it back. But it's sitting in a museum down in Nashville at the Troubadour Theater today. And you can go through it. We don't charge anything. It's free. It's a free attraction. Uh, we're very proud to say that that's the way I think Ernest would have wanted it. So it's sitting down there nowadays. and uh, We take donations. And all the money that is donated, we give to the Grand Ole Opry Trust Fund, which is for musicians that have problems, or destitute, a house burned down, a mama has a heart attack, or whatever. So we give the money away, and I think Ernest would be very proud of us for doing that.